My name is Ryan Tremaine, Director at QED Environmental Services, and today I'd like to talk about asbestos removal, particularly when or if asbestos should be removed from a building and what's involved in the process. When a building contains asbestos, the landlord has to make a long-term calculation balancing the ongoing risk and cost of managing asbestos in the building versus cost today to remove it. The answers may depend on the type of asbestos, bonded or friable, where the asbestos is, how difficult it will be to remove, or whether there are any future plans to even demolish the building. The long-term goal in any building is to make the building asbestos free, subsequently eliminating the risk of potential exposure. It is all too common today that works will commence in the building and the asbestos register and management plan has not been reviewed, resulting in exposure to the occupants and the contractor. So, how do we go about it? Firstly, it's best to have an asbestos assessor prepare a specification highlighting controls and procedures required to minimise contamination during the works. Secondly, you need to engage a qualified asbestos removal contractor suited to the job. Dependent on the material being removed, the contractor will either be required to have an unrestricted or restricted asbestos licence. The difference being is a removalist with a restricted licence can only remove bonded asbestos. An unrestricted license holder can remove friable asbestos. Friable asbestos is an asbestos that can be reduced to a powdery form using a hand action and is typically thermal or acoustic type material. After the engagement, the contractor's asbestos removal plan should be reviewed by an assessor who is independent to the contractor to ensure removal operation complies with the relevant codes of practice and is specific to the removal works. Once the removal works is underway, the main task of the independent assessor is to monitor the removal works, ensuring the controls in the removal plan are being followed and that the area outside of the removal zone is not being compromised. Depending on the material being removed, there may be a need to conduct airborne control monitoring during the works. Control monitoring enables us to measure fibre levels outside the removal zone and provide feedback to the contractor on the effectiveness on the removal controls. At the conclusion of the works, the assessor will visually inspect the removal zone, firstly looking for any dust or debris. Once satisfied the area is visually clean, airborne clearance monitoring will be conducted to assess if the area is safe now to reoccupy without the use of PPE. Without having an independent assessor sign off on the works, there is a risk that the works may not have been concluded to a satisfactory level. It is often seen Asbestos fences are snapped off at the base, leaving asbestos material in the ground. Or even during a roof removal, the ceiling space is still contaminated because the insulation has not been removed and there are fragments scattered throughout the ceiling space. The result of a poor removal is a potential exposure to the occupants, especially if there is no independent assessor engaged to issue a clearance, subsequently putting everyone at risk. To sum up, all asbestos doesn't need to be removed immediately but where the economic case stacks up, it's the best action in reducing asbestos exposure. For more information on asbestos removal, visit qed.com.au.